Dear friend, welcome back to the channel. It is a great evening here in Southeast Asia, Malaysia, to be precise. Wherever you are around the globe, you are highly welcome. In Africa, um, I know it's in the evening right now. Well, well, well. It's been a quiet day, actually. It's been a very quiet day. Most of you, it, it can tell from the videos I loaded today, it looks like most of you were not even interested in watching videos today. But in any way, anyhow, those videos are loaded. They have a lot of exclusives. I would advise you that you go back and watch those earlier on videos today. They contain a lot of information, things you need to know about your club, Chelsea, and some other news around the globe, dear friend. It is very important that anytime you load a video, you make sure you watch all. Because some of the videos, they come stage by stage. You have to get this information in order to understand this. You get it. So the videos you miss out on today, Please go back and watch them. They are right down there. Click on them and watch them. All right, dear friend, quickly. Pep Guardiola has spoken finally regarding the Carabao Cup. And I'm starting from there because I was waiting to hear what he would say regarding the Carabao Cup. Club's jubilation or celebration by indicating his, in his 20 years of coaching, he said that this cup that he just won against Chelsea is the best or the most exciting among all the trophies that he had ever won in his 20 years of coaching. That is what Klopp said. And so I was waiting to hear what Pep Guardiola would say regarding the trophy, regarding the Carabao Cup. And honestly, I wasn't surprised to hear him speak. Guardiola on the Carabao Cup, he said, I still remember when I arrived at City, Brian Kidd told me, Carabao Cup, don't pay attention. <laughs> Play young players, nobody cares. Silas Ferguson was always, oof, it doesn't matter. Whoa, I don't know what happened in the last years. He doesn't understand what happened in the last years. Now that the Carabao Cup has become like a World Cup. But when he arrived, Brian Kidd told him, play the kids. Don't pay attention to that, to the Carabao Cup. Play the kids. Nobody cares about it. Ferguson, Sir Alex Ferguson told him, Ooh, it doesn't matter. No one cares about the Cabral Cup. But today, in the last years, he just cannot understand what has happened. It become one of the hottest trophies. And the point is very clear. It is better you win something than you end the season without winning anything. You can be second on the league table. But so long as you are, you are trophyless, you are trophyless. You can be second, third on the league table, second or third or fourth on the league table. But if you don't win any trophy for that season, you're, you are trophyless. So a coach that comes to England for five years, six years, and you didn't win anything, dear friend, it's better if you win the Carabao Cup. Yes, you, that, that will go into the history books that you won something. That is how it is in England right now. Just to win a trophy, and hey, you know how much the, the prize money for Carabao Cup is? 100,000 pounds. The whole trophy that Liverpool celebrated is only 100,000 pounds. It's not even up to a million, a million pounds. The FA Cup is about 2.5 million pounds. The prize money for the winner. Carabao Cup is only, it's only 100,000 pounds. As a matter of fact, whose uh, uh, wages, weekly wages? Is it? Who is any hundred thousand pounds a week? A week pay for one of the, some of the players. That's the Carabao Cup. But because it's just a trophy, you we just uh, you know coaches now want to win it as part of you know what they've won in their career. That is how it is. Well, that being said, we move on. Portatino has been speaking, and it, it looks as if he he and the players they are trying to recover from the shock of losing to Liverpool in the Carabao Cup. He came to the press and he spoke for a very long time. He has not spoken so long in a press conference. He, this time around, he spoke so long. Like I said, I loaded the video. Verbatim, everything that the coach said, you can watch him there on the video and listen to every word that he has spoken. But there are some few things that I put, that I, 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 I kept, I wrote down. One of the things he said on portrait, no, on Nkuku, Christopher Anku said we were watching and he was flying in preseason until he got the knee injury. And now it's nearly eight months. And even when he was ready to be involved again, 
He was never the same player as before. We have in our head the best Nkuku that everyone knows from Germany, but that isn't the same player. So now we, you've seen it now. About four weeks ago, five, five weeks ago, the, uh, six weeks ago, the, the narrative, the narrative was, oh, once Nkuku arrived, in early part of January, before the transfer opens, December, we had a narrative, let Nkuku arrive. Nkuku is a solution to our striking issues. Once Nkuku arrived, today the coach is saying the player is not the same. Were we not anticipating that? Didn't we know that footballers can go on in, get injured when they come back, they never remain the same? In how many years of coaching, both in England and outside England, does Pochettino want to tell us that he doesn't know that players can come back and, and they'll never be the same? So why were, were they banking their hope on the return of Nkuku? Saying once Nkuku arrived, things will change. Now he has arrived. Three games. The last game against Liverpool, no impact. And to worsen it up, dear friend, to worsen it up, to worsen it up, dear friend, listen to this. Christopher Nkuku is out for three weeks to four weeks. That is the latest news. On our injury update, Christopher Nkuku undergoing medical assessment as we speak. And we need to see and evaluate every day, but he's out for three or four weeks, Christopher Nkuku. We hope no more, according to Pochettino. It's difficult for him. We watch him when he arrived in preseason. He was flying on the training pitch until he got injured. Now it is nearly eight months and he has been involved again. But it is not the same player as before. We, we have in our head the amazing Nkuku from preseason, but it is not the same player because of the circumstances. That's why it is sometimes unfair when we judge. But right now, as we speak, the player picked an injury again in the Carabao Cup against Liverpool. And he's going to be out for three to four weeks. That is how it is with Chelsea right now. Well, for me to let you go to bed tonight, Pochettino once again, he said, we never set the team up to go for penalties. Because he was being criticized. Or the statement he made. Maybe it was English problem. Maybe the translation, the choosing of the words carefully. That's why maybe the press got it wrong. But he clarified that by saying, we never set the team up to go for penalties. Come on. We try to win in 90 minutes or extra time. Is that before extra time and half time in extra time, we said, come on, we need to go and win. He emphasized that it is the reason why he brought on Moidrick and Christopher Nkuku more attacking in order to finish the game. Realizing that players like Jackson and the Gallagher, they were tired. Dear friend, and as you can see on your screen, posted on Instagram by Nicola Jackson. That picture you can see on your screen from Jackson. Yeah. What you can see on the screen there is posted by Jackson on Instagram. He said, painful, but we keep fighting. Painful, but we keep fighting. Dear friend, that is all I have for you for tonight. I will see you in the next one when you see me. Shalom and peace.